This is Josh Spicer from GameWisdom.com. I hope you enjoyed this critical thought, your daily discussion on game design. Welcome to today's critical thought. As always, before we get going, thank you to currently 939 subscribers here on YouTube. Hope everyone's enjoying the content, and for you first timers, be sure to subscribe as we are getting close to 50 away from 1,000. Before we begin today's critical thought, got a little special announcement for you. I decided to splurge a little bit for Black Friday, and I ordered a PlayStation 4. The reason I basically had to um, convince myself was it would open up the door to do more streaming and more content here on Game Wisdom and, of course, on the YouTube channel. That means I'll be able to play games like um, Uncharted, Tomb Raider. I'm kind of interested to see about Destiny. I, kind of, I want to see what that game's all about. And that little game I'm sure none of you have ever heard of, Bloodborne. It also means I can stream some like the older games, like Persona, Toomba, Fatal Frame. I figure all the more better. So, I ordered it yesterday, and hopefully I'll have it real soon. And I'll be certainly experimenting with getting that hooked up for streaming, and sending the videos over here. But, it does kind of lead into today's topic, and that is the rise of streaming. This is going to be sort of based on this week's Perceptive Podcast, which should be somewhere here right now, that I had with developer slash streamer Robert Swan, a.k.a. Rob the Swan. Now, for those of you who've been paying attention to the channel and Twitch stream, you know we had a very lengthy interview a few weeks ago. And this week's podcast was sort of the prelude to that. And on the podcast, we talked more about the rise of streaming services, Twitch, and what it means for the game industry, whether you're a consumer or a developer. And streaming is still one of those weird things for us older people. I still haven't completely gotten myself around that, and you have no idea the nightmare it was trying to convince my mom about what is the on-demand service does when you're on your TV. But... Streaming is certainly here to stay, and just like with YouTube, and for those of you watching content here, it means big business for everyone involved. I've seen Twitch streamers, of course, who have certainly made a name for themselves, turning their channel to it almost a daily show, with weird skits, weird things happening, and all kinds of insanity ensuing. I have watched a few of those live stream fails myself in order to try and avoid doing something similar. But with Twitch and with streaming, it has certainly opened up the door for the game industry, and especially for showing off games. These days, just like with YouTube, if you want to watch a game or want to know more about it, chances are someone has either played it or is playing it as we speak on Twitch. There's retro gaming, modern gaming, multiplayer, pen and paper, card games, you name it, there's probably a stream for it somewhere on Twitch. And for the consumer, this has certainly opened up things to move away from traditional TV. We talked about this on the podcast, with how a lot of people have been turning to streaming services, especially Twitch, to get their daily content. For instance, for me, every year I watch the EVO Grand Tournaments on Twitch. I usually watch like a few players like Trump from Hearthstone and stuff like that. And it is a very great time. There's also the communal aspect. If you're watching something live on Twitch, you can talk to the other audience members. And these days there's ways for the audience to interact with the Twitch streamer, such as, you know, giving them tips, um activating like special things. I know Twitch has this thing called I think Bits now for Twitch partners that you can, you know, donate or do something special with them for your favorite Twitch streamers. And there has been talk of, or I'm sorry, this has certainly opened up the door for getting more video games onto TVs. As we talked about, the Dota 2 tournaments were broadcast on I think ESPN2 a few months ago. Uh, TBS has been showing weekly esports tournaments of Overwatch and Counter Strike, and a lot more. Now, with that said, though, I still think we have quite a bit to go before streaming and regular TV are going to be fully immersed. And the reason has to do with one of the big advantages of Twitch or of streaming in general. And that is the fact that 
there's always content. It's not like a TV where if I won't watch like sports, I only have a few options. Or if let's say I turn on ESPN and they're running soccer, but I won't watch football. Well, that's not going to be an option there. Now, that is technically a bad example because ESPN does have multiple channels. But when it comes to the esports or video game variety, one game for a show or one game for a channel is not going to do it. Like I said with the TBS example, while Counter-Strike Go is interesting, I would much rather watch fighting game tournaments or even professional StarCraft plays. And they don't have that, so I'm kind of out of luck. But with Twitch, like I said, for anything that I want to watch right now, chances are there's a channel or a stream for it. Same thing goes for who knows how many Hearthstone players there are, League of Legends, um, I'm trying a blank here, I'm trying to think of all the ones that I've watched in the past and I can't come up with anything off the top of my head right now, and so on. Now, what this means for developers is something that we kind of saw happening about, I would like to say, 10 years ago. It could be a little longer than that. When StarCraft II started to really, or I'm sorry, when StarCraft started to become really popular, there was a push from the strategy genre to really embrace the esports and streaming side of things. And one of the things that we saw developers do was embrace broadcaster mode. This is where people could essentially control what's being shown on screen and break things down for a more professional atmosphere. If you've watched streamers like Day9 or Husky, I may be dating myself with StarCraft 2 there, it's kind of what the tools that they would use. Being able to talk about a match, show information that's relevant to what they're speaking, and present in a way that it's not meant to be played, but it's meant to be watched and get immersed in. Fighting games have been slowly coming around this with like custom like um, borders and stuff like that when you watch Evo or streamers, but it's definitely become more adopted by strategy games, MOBAs, and the like. Now what, now, what that means for developers is that making your game have streaming functionality is becoming more and more popular. As again, if your game gets streamed, it means more people are going to learn about your game, which raises its interest and hopefully raises its sales. A really good example of this would be the publisher slash developer Tiny Build, who, with just about every game I've received press copies for, has some kind of Twitch integration or streaming functionality directly built into it. Now, some developers have gone the extra mile, such as with Darkest Dungeon, who create like unique voice clips or little special things for people who stream their game so that if someone subscribed or left a message, it would like pop up on the screen with that character's voice or something like that. And these are all ways to for developers to embrace the Twitch or the streaming community. And again, this is becoming a very big deal. As we've seen with the indie market, with so many games coming out, being able to make your game friendlier for people to either record or broadcast is pretty much a net win for you, for the reasons we just talked about. Another example would be games that have even gone as far as allowing the, the players, or I'm sorry, for the audience to directly influence the game. Forced um, Showdown would be an example of that, where people like or they click on stuff on your channel or while you're streaming it, it gets you rewards in game to help you out. Another really good example that I haven't heard too much about right now would be Epsilon Circuit from Robot Loves Kitty. I think I talked about this game on my previous Critical Thought, but if you missed it, what they're playing, or when I originally spoke to them, was about a game that was essentially a game show. And the players who are playing the game literally only have one life. And once they die, they are forever banned from playing that game again. And the audience members will basically step in and become the next players. Think of it like a Price is Right Me Tucker games or something like that. And the audience can also influence the players, either making it easier or harder for them. And again, that's a game that is just sounds amazing 
for a streaming audience. In fact, when I spoke to them a few years ago, they were talking about it just being exclusively for streaming. Like you could only play the game at certain times of the day, like watching a network show. And we've seen other examples of this with like a party games, quiz games, stuff like that in the past. Like I think there was something on Xbox Live about one versus one hundred, and the one hundred people watching would then become the players. And these are all ways for streaming to become a greater integration of the game industry. But we'll wrap up today's critical thought in the next minute or so. With streaming as it has grown, the question is about how it will become more and more part of the console market. As we've seen with the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, they have streaming built directly into it. Now, of course, whether Nintendo will follow suit is anyone's guess at the moment. But, like I said, these, this is just another way for developers to get their games in front of people and for people to essentially, as we've seen with YouTubers, become celebrities in their own right. But we're going to end things here. As always, thank you so much for watching these critical thoughts. Again, if you enjoy things, be sure to like and subscribe. And like I said at the start, stay tuned for actual PlayStation 4 coverage and streaming coming to the Game Wisdom Twitch channel. That is, of course, GW Bicer. Once again, I'm Josh Bicer from GameWisdom.com, where we examine the art and science of games. Be sure to check out my podcast with Rob the Swan, as well as our very, very lengthy live stream interview. All the links to it will be in that link I annotated somewhere up there earlier. And have a great night, and I will talk to you tomorrow with more great content here and on GameWisdom.com. Take care. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and of course share with your friends, it always helps out. For daily posts on all manner of game design and industry topics, check out Game-Wisdom.com. To support the site and everything that I do, be sure to check out the Patreon campaign. If we can hit goals, it will mean more content for everyone to enjoy, and I'll be able to support myself and my household. If you want to follow me, you can find me on Twitter at GWBicer for updates throughout the day and random thoughts from me. And lastly, you can find me on Twitch right over there at GWBicer for daily streams most nights around 10 Eastern. Thanks again for watching the video, and be sure to check out more great content coming to the Game Wisdom channel real soon.